Welcome back to Dielectric Videos. On today's episode, I'm going to show you how I built this fuel injection manifold adapter for the dune buggy. As you may have noticed, I'm running a different engine today. This is actually a 1600cc engine, which is significantly larger than the 1200cc that I had built previously. It's a dual port engine with a significantly higher airflow intake, and thus I'm going to be using a dual fuel injector system in this implementation. The first step to setting up this new fuel injection system is going to be to make an adapter that allows this throttle body, which belongs to a similar carburetor to the one that's on here now, to be able to interface with the fuel injectors themselves. What I'm planning to do here is take this throttle body, which already fits on the intake manifold of the engine, and I'm going to be attaching a set of riser tubes, which bolt on via a plate, into which the injectors themselves will be mounted. On top of those riser tubes, I'll then be attaching a side pipe where air can be drawn in from a filter. Let's get started with the build. So here you can see the throttle body up close. Now I've 3D printed a base plate that I'm going to be using for the fuel injector system that actually matches all of the mounting holes that are already on the manifold and the throttle body. So what this will do is sandwich between the upper section of the fuel injector rail and the lower section of the throttle body. What I'm planning to do is to get a set of tubes. These are made of paper, but I'll be using steel in the final version, mounting them on top of this plate, and then getting a collector tube for intake air for the filter to be attached. Now, additionally, I've gotten I've ordered a set of these uh, fuel injector bungs, which are actually designed to accommodate a standard sized fuel injector. Now, this has been modified slightly. I've put some temporary spacers on to accommodate this injector, but the idea here is that these can mount at an angle and be welded in place onto these tubes and allow injectors to be attached to the system. So I'm going to be using a little piece of quarter inch steel. I'll be taking this and cutting out first just the base plate. I'll be drilling out the holes in the correct locations. And from there, I can proceed to cut it out and uh, put it in place for welding. So before I started cutting out the material, I marked out the location where my holes needed to go so that I could drill them out on the drill press later. Next, I cut it out on the bandsaw. As you can see, I used plenty of cutting fluid here, and I'm using the Swag bandsaw adapter table with a Harbor Freight uh, portable bandsaw unit. I'm just finishing off the corners here, the goal being to make them nice and round. And you can see I'm just taking my time with that so that I don't have nice, uh, excessively sharp corners. So there it is. Now I've set up my drill press here so that I can drill out these holes. I originally sized them to the internal diameter of the pipes I was going to use, but then I decided to drill the outside diameter just so that I could insert the pipe into the plate and make it easier to weld later. Now this is quite a grindy process as the drill press doesn't have a ton of torque and this is a very large bit, so it goes on and on for quite some time. Now despite the slow rate of progress, it did eventually get through, so I basically just kept going at it, adding cutting fluid as needed, and gradually, little by little, I chopped a little bit more metal until I finally got to the bottom of this plate. So there you have it, I was able to get through one, and I moved on quickly to the next one. Pretty much the same procedure here, clamped it in place, put some cutting fluid on it, and got the hole started. This one did seem to go by a little bit faster. That might be partially due to the fact that some of the cutting surface was exposed to the open air, so it wasn't quite cutting into such a, a blind hole as it was before, but now it's actually getting through a little bit faster. And there it is. I vacuumed it up just to clean up the area, and now I'm moving on to drill the holes where the bolts will go through. You'll also notice I'm going to be marking out the location of a hole for the vacuum port, which will be important later. So I'll be using a regular twist drill for this one. I'm clamping the piece in place, although it looked like I had some trouble getting the clamps to be square to the table, as you see there. But I made it work nevertheless. So the first hole took probably the longest out of any of them. You kind of have to estimate the feeds and speeds when you first start with these twist drills. But subsequent holes went relatively quickly. 
You can see in each case, I basically move the position of the clamps, run the drill through, making sure to use plenty of cutting fluid in the process. This will be the last hole drilled through. And now I moved on to the top pipe, which is made out of regular galvanized steel. Now the galvanized steel does end up being a bit of a problem later when trying to weld, but nevertheless, I was still able to get it to work. You can see this too is a bit of a grindy process, especially since it has to go through the tangent to the surface of that, uh, of that cylinder, but it gets through eventually as well. Now here is one area where I wasn't super satisfied with the quality of the product, as I ended up basically having these holes drilled a little bit out of collinearity with the axis of the pipe. That ended up not being a big issue though, because I was able to fill weld mostly effectively in the welding stage. So here I'm cutting out pieces of tube for the actual uh, injector vertical riser tubes. Again, the bandsaw is quite useful for this type of work. And finally, I'm cleaning up the surface of all the steel parts to ensure a good quality weld once I get to the welding stage. In case you're wondering, I'm using a flap disc. I don't know the grit of the sandpaper. I think it was something like 60 grit but it works really well for cleaning up metal prior to welding, just because it takes off plenty of material and leaves a nice smooth surface behind. You wanna get that oxide layer off before you go to weld, since that layer can cause uh, inferior adhesion and poor uh, penetration of the welds if not removed. This little elbow there is actually going to be part of the vacuum system as well, which you'll see later. And finally, I'm knocking the zinc off of the galvanized pipe so the welds are better there too. So I'm tack welding everything in place, just getting it all in place initially before I move on to welding the whole thing together. Now I didn't notice it at the time, but these tubes are not exactly straight vertical, and it's pretty evident in the video now that I've looked back at it. But nevertheless, I was still able to make it work the way I wanted it to. You can see I'm just gradually moving around the outside edge with the welder, and now I'm positioning and tacking the vacuum port, which is just a little galvanized elbow. This is where the zinc becomes kind of an issue though, because what I was finding was the zinc oxide was spraying off of the galvanized surface and making a bit of a mess. Nevertheless though, the welds did seem strong enough and the seal was pretty good on that vacuum port, so the galvanized really didn't end up being a problem after all. You can see I'm just touching up a few areas where maybe I didn't get the weld all the way engaged on it. But you can definitely see those zinc oxide fumes billowing out of this galvanized pipe. You definitely want to do this in a well-ventilated area if you don't want to get metal fume fever. I'm just cleaning up the welds there with a wire wheel just to make them a little bit cleaner for the uh, next step where I'll be finishing it off with the grinder. And now I'm just grinding the surface flush, since some of those pipes I think were a little bit deeper in the, uh, in the plate than the actual surface of the plate was. So there it is. The cleanup process is complete, and I'm just finishing off those last few surfaces as we move to the end of this clip. So as you can see, I've finished welding together this system for holding the fuel injectors onto the manifold. As you can see, I've added a vacuum takeoff port for the MAP sensor. I have two intakes on either side for the air filters, and I have a flush sealing surface for the gasket that will interface this piece to the throttle body. The next thing I have to do is drill the holes for the fuel injector bungs and weld those in place. Let's do that next. This part of the video is all about installing the injector holder bungs onto the steel that I've already welded. You can see I just pilot drilled those holes and I'm now using a hole saw to cut a hole for the injector bung. Now I quickly found that the throat depth of the hole saw was insufficient, so I switched to a step drill. The step drill is a little bit more brute force, not quite as well optimized, but it's able to actually cut to the complete depth that I needed to get such an aggressive angle for the injector holders. So I'm just finishing up the first one of these two drills, and this is actually turning out relatively well. So you can see the injector bung fits nicely, and I'm now switching over to the other side. This one I started right away with the twist drill rather than starting with the hole saw, and it is working extremely well. 
Now I ended up going, I think, a little bit too deep because this one ended up being a slightly wider hole than the other. Nevertheless, it still ended up working well enough for my application. I'm cleaning up the holes with a file here just to make sure that they're nice and smooth before I go weld on it. And I also used some electrical contact cleaner here to make sure there were no remaining oils or other residues that might adversely affect the welds. So now I've set up to weld this in place, and as per usual, I've tack welded the injector bung in place. This is kind of a now or never moment because I only have one set of injector bungs and they're rather expensive. So I took a little bit of time working on this. I went through step by step and just filled in weld all the way around the injector bung, being very careful not to overheat the area where the threads were located. However, it was at this point that I realized I'd sort of painted myself into a corner because I couldn't reach the MIG welder very far into that middle section between the two bungs. That being said though, I ended up just feeding the wire in anyway and it did seem to turn out reasonably well. All right, I have the injectors installed. As you can see, this unit is pretty much complete. At this point, I'm gonna be ready to go ahead and install it on the vehicle. All right, I've mounted the intake manifold system onto the vehicle here. So what I've basically done is connected my vacuum line to the MAP sensor. I've connected the fuel injectors to the ECM that I based on my previous design, and I've connected a temporary fuel hose set up here. Eventually I'll be using actual rubber fuel rated hose, right now I'm just using vinyl hose. For this test it should be suitable. I also installed a spring here to ensure that the uh, throttle returns promptly to its normal position, and I've gasketed the connections to make sure that vacuum leaks don't occur. Let's go ahead and crank it up and see how it runs. So I just switched the fuel mixture to E51 ethanol instead of pure gasoline, and I actually got a huge improvement once I reduced the mixture AFR ratios. All I did was I added a compensation factor in my program to allow me to switch between the two fuels, and I find that the thing really likes to run on E51. We don't really have E85 in my area, although I'd love to try it on E85 or even E100, but for the time being, E51 is quite nice. I'll show you what I mean. So the responsiveness definitely seemed better on E51 than on straight gas. So as you saw, my new electronic fuel injection adapter is working. It idles, it accelerates, and it doesn't run too badly. That being said though, there's a lot of optimizations that still need to be done and a lot of tuning that needs to be performed. Right now it still has lag spots on the acceleration, and it still runs a little bit rich when coming off of a high speed rev and at idle. In order to solve those problems, I'll be incorporating additional AFR tables into my program, and additionally, I may end up adding a throttle position sensor at some point. Nevertheless, the basic implementation is finished, and this is working very nicely for what it is. So, thanks for watching Dielectric videos, and I will see you next time.